service and light out. Time to get that gone. Righty-oy then guys, hello there, welcome back to a new video. Um, I wasn't actually gonna... Let me plug the dash cam in. I wasn't actually gonna start filming this video yet, but I've gotta go on a little rant. Well, I say a little rant, a big rant. Big little rant, I don't know. Um, anyway, as you guys know, I try and post a video once a week, uh, if I can, twice a week, and, uh, I posted a video last week, but it's, it's not there anymore, so I'm gonna go over why that is very quickly, whilst I'm on my way to go and get the Audi service, woo, getting on track with selling the Audi, finally, but yes, so I had to remove a video. Because I had some Muppet that thought it would be nice to share that video of me round the amazing world of Facebook, more specifically for my area, um, and tell everyone in the whole place of where I live that I drive like an idiot, I don't deserve a license, and all this sort of stuff because of my last video. Now, I want to make a few things clear whilst I'm driving. Um, number one, I was out in some country lanes with no one else around apart from the two vehicles that I passed entering it. For those of you that saw the video before I removed it, you guys will know what I mean. There was two cars that I came across coming towards me as I entered the country lanes, but after that, it was completely clear. Throughout the entirety of them country lanes, I was doing the speed limit. The only reason why it sounded like I was going faster is because I was in a low gear doing high revs. Um, for those of you that that like spirited driving um, and you drive a naturally aspirated car, like the Yaris is, uh, you would know that the only way to get the maximum performance out of one of them cars, out of a naturally aspirated car, is to stay up in the rev range because that's where most of your power comes from which is what I do when I drive the Yaris. I keep it up in the rev range, so when I want to put my foot down just a little bit, not to break any speed limits or anything like that, the power delivery is there. Because with the Yaris, obviously you've got VVTi, which is Toyota's answer to VTEC. And um, basically VVTi is a little solenoid in the, um, in the engine that opens when you hit a certain rev range uh, to give you a bit more power. Works well, a bit like a turbo, but without turbo in the car, if that makes sense. So, I always keep the Yaris up in VVTi because that's when it's most playful, most fun to drive. The last video I did, which I had to remove, which I'm tempted to re-upload because I've got no reason really to remove it, um, was a boring sit down and talk update video. Now, I'm not gonna do anything to the cars in that video, I'm just sitting there talking. And the only way to make that video entertaining is to do spirited driving within the speed limits and not driving like an absolute cock, which I'm doing now. Oh, 70, because I'm up to the speed limit and the Audi's in sixth and I'm doing bang on 70. So any Karens out there, don't get butt raped. I did a bit of acceleration to get to the speed limit, okay? Um, but yeah, so I do spirited driving on sit down and talk videos to keep it entertaining, to keep it a little fun, and so you know you guys can hear the sound of the Yaris and stuff because I, I think it sounds pretty cool. Um, so, so yeah, this person decided to share my video around all of the Facebook gossip board things for my area saying that to look out for me because I'm a dangerous driver, I don't deserve a license, I speed everywhere, all this sort of shit. Which isn't the case because when I do spirited driving and make them sort of videos, I go down roads that I know 
that I know where all of the pulling points are, all the wide bits, all the narrow bits. I know them roads like the back of my hand. And that is why I choose them roads very wisely to make them sort of videos. Because it's out the way, I know the roads, I know where the roads get busy, I know where the roads get tight, and I know where the ro roads open up. So I go there, so I'm out the way of everyone, so the only person I'm ever endangering is myself, which I'm not endangering myself because a lot of the time I don't even do the speed limit, which is 60 mile an hour in a country lane. I don't even do that a lot of the time on film. The only reason why it sounds fast or looks fast is because I'm in a low gear at high revs and I'm playing with VVTi. It's the only reason why. So, to this Muppet called Tony Addison, there you go. I have answered what you have put all over the gossip board. Also, if you can't already tell, in the back there is a fucking kid seat in the Audi. Do you think I'm going to drive like a prick? No. So, there you go. Ran over. But, to summarise, I pick my roads wisely when making videos. I keep out of the way if I want to drive like a knob, which I don't drive like a knob because I don't go above the speed limit. So, I've only got myself to blame if stuff goes wrong. And... Even when I'm driving around town, which is evident in the video I've removed for you, Mr. Tony. Um... I drive at the speed limits anyway, and that was evident on film. Because I keep up with the flow of traffic, I drive at speed limits, and I don't drive like an absolute cockwomble. I've learnt my lesson from driving like a cockwomble in the past, because everyone was young once, I mean, I'm still young, but everyone was young once, and wanted to drive like a prick and be a boy racer. I've outlived that. I mean, I have my fun in my cars, granted. But, I don't drive like a prick everywhere, and I don't go speeding through town, or anything like that because I'm not that way mentally inclined anymore. I've, I'm gonna open up to you actually, mate. I got done for speeding last August, and since then, I have learnt my lesson. Call me a pussy, call me a wimp, I don't care. But, I got done for speeding, for driving like a dickhead, and I learnt my lesson from it. Therefore, am I really gonna be that way inclined to make the same mistake again? No. No, I'm not. And especially now because of that little seat where my thumb is. I'm not driving like a prick at all, period. Even in the Aris. Because the Aris is my baby. And it's going on track anyway, so that'll be when I drive like a prick. So anyway, officially, ran over. I'm on my way to my mates to service the Audi. I've got all the service items in the back. I've got the spare light in the armrest and the Aris seat sport. And, um... I'll pick you guys up when we get there. Right, so here we are, under the Audi, and there's loads of plastics in the way. <laughs> so, what is the first thing to do? Pull all the plastics off and then everything's under there? Yeah. So, how many screws do you reckon there are? I don't know, half a dozen. Six or seven, maybe a few more. How many are left in is the question. What, do they all fall out? Uh, fall out, get taken out and forgotten about. Bloody hell. And then what? it comes in two pieces as well. Why do they do this? Is it aerodynamics or...? Yeah. Oh, God. Hence why it's got, like, scoops in it. Yeah. Because you could... By having it all flat underneath, you can get better downforce and less drag at the same time. Yeah. Win-win for everything. It's not too bad. Oh yeah, there's loads of screws, isn't there? Right, I'm not going to leave you looking at unscrewing screws. We'll get back when all the plastics are off. Right, yo. So here we are. It's off. And it actually looks quite dry under there. Apart from that's... No, that's, that's quite dirty. And there's a big splodge there. What do you reckon that is? It could be several things. Could be a boost pipe leaking. Oh yeah, I've got that one on top still, still leaking. Yeah. The one that's been leaking since I've had the bloody car. <laughs> it looks like it's around the gearbox side, doesn't it? Oh, the gearbox no. is at the back one, Oh yeah, of course it is. It's not like a retarded jack car. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's just oil, isn't it? That's just yeah. residual oil. It's yeah. black as anything, Calm though. Down. Whoa, crikey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, on the axle stand. Might be helpful. 
Right. Let's get everything taken off. Bloody hell. What about that? Right, we do have some interesting cars to get on the channel, which I was just discussing about, but I'm going to keep it quiet. Let's just say there's a bit of it sitting here. Anyone want to have any guesses? Well, it's a gearbox, but yeah. There's some interesting cars coming to the channel at some point soon when all this COVID stuff blows over properly. But now it's time to take the oil out. Let's see if it, see how bad it looks. It's needed a service for over a thousand miles, so I'm expecting... Oh god. Well, there's no water, which is good. But that is very, very black. That is very black. Right, well, we'll leave that to drain out. Oh, there's a cat. Hello. Don't run away. Right. That ain't five litres of oil, is it? I think I've lost half of it. That's not five litres of oil, surely. Yeah, that looks more like two to three. Uh-oh. Does that mean we've got issues? It's diesel. Burns oil. I really wish I would have kept an eye on the oil level. I ain't gonna lie, I haven't pulled the dipstick out once on this car. <laughs> yeah, if you come up with a light, I wouldn't worry too much. Exactly. Well, what am I on about? You're not, you're not using it for racing. VWs and Audis and all that are all about having lights up, aren't they? Exactly. It just means that my Audi's broken because it hasn't had any lights up. Exactly there you go. Still going. Yeah, it'll go for a little while. Yeah. But yeah, that's definitely... Don't say take the oil cap off and pull the dipstick out. Don't that make it go quicker? Of course, she's hot. Whoever filled out with oil last can't actually aim though, because it's all over that flipping drainy bit. I'll hold you to that when you put it in. Well, I put it in. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair play. Okay. Right, this is a job that I've tried to do myself before, which is getting. I uh, can't remember what light it is. One of these lights out, which is a side light, and it involves going through here, which means taking that off, which screws in there and sits back here. Um, yeah, I've tried doing it before, but it's got like a little like pinch tab thing, and it's actually snapped. So I've got a feeling we're going to have to pull the headlight out to get it out. Not too sure though. <clears throat> but again, I don't remember what bloody light it is. Let me have a look. See if I can find it. Uh, where's fucking side lights on this thing? On. There we are. That one, uh, one. Closest one in at the top. That's true. So, yes, yeah, that one there, which can be confirmed because it's on over here. So let's go and turn that off. Ugh. Annoying Audi chimes. There we go. Sorted. Top half your box. Top half of the air box off, and let's see how bad this panel filter looks. Don't look too bad from. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. It's not too bad. It's worse. Right, let's go and get a new one. Which will be this one. Got a man filter. We'll take, take the box out, and then right. we can get to that light. Bloody hell. Look at the amount of debris there is in there. I'm going to go and empty that out. That's. There's a cigarette butt in it! <laughs> Bloody hell. Alright. Want a sneak peek of what's coming on the channel? There you go. That is a B6 RS4. With a V8. What is it? B5? I thought it was B6. What's a B6 and what's a B5 then? Because B6 is proof facelift of this, isn't it? Yeah, they didn't do a B6 RS4, they did a B7 RS4, but they... and then a B5. Oh, well yeah, B5 RS4 then guys, with a V8, coming C on the channel. V6! V6! V6 twin turbo. It's getting worse. V8, and then they went, they've gone back to the V6 again now. Yeah? That's depressing. Either way, it looks like a nice car. Can't wait to get it on the channel. 
And then what are we doing? We're trying to get to that light, aren't we? Yeah, just having another look at it. Yeah, so there's this inspection cover that covers the back of it. And there's supposed to be a little pinch tab, and I know that because I confirmed it on the other side. There's supposed to be a little pinch tab, but the tabs are snapped. Yeah. Which is so why. That's the big main light. Yeah. The full beam. Which I'll just take out the way for now. Everything seems in really good condition down here, though. It's not too bad. There's your turbo. Wow. Big boost, that. What, what turbo's on these, naturally? Ooh, I don't know on the two litres. Ah. On one nine's TDI fours? Uh, they're all, like, because they're VNT, they're like different numbers. Mm. Don't want to come out, does it? Because I was sitting there, like, spinning it around and twisting it for ages and realised it had a pinch tab on it. Right, after much swearing. Oh, it's out! Hey! So, yeah, she's blind. Definite. But Jolly Old Halfers came to the repair about four months ago. That's literally how long it's been blowing for. I remember it because it blew when I was with my ex. I haven't been with her for a while. That <laughs> <laughs> little bit extra out of space sometimes. Surely do. Air boxes are getting in the way, and so are other pointless plastics. Yeah, that works now. Hey, we have lights. Oh. Right, I'm gonna get the new air filter out. Actually, I can do this on film. All right, let's get this new one out. Compare. Bloody hell, I can already see the difference. So there's a new one, all nice and clean. It's supposed to be a nice white colour. And there's the old one, <laughs> full of leaves, debris and God knows what else. So I think it's safe to say we should probably get the new one in the car. Right, so... When reinstalling the bottom of the airbox, it has two guidance tabs. Yeah, I'll take which... a look at it, you can see. So, there's a holes for them. I don't know if you can see them. One there, one there. Guidance holes, and then you've got little poppy bits in the bottom. And they're proving difficult to get back in, aren't they? Yeah. It's because it's rubber, isn't it? Just flexors. Just a bit of flex. We'll go in. Just got to line them up and give it a good People time. moan at me for flexing in a 1200 quid Audi as well. So, <laughs> this just adds to the flex. <laughs> but, I mean, the Yaris is borderline undrivable on the roads now, so I think this is a sensible choice. You ain't going to like my replacement for this, though. No? No. French rubbish. Nope. Still German. But I'm not going to say anything on camera either. I'm going to make people wait. I don't like it. And just like that, the air filter's back in, apart from the little ducty plastic cold intake, cold intake scoopy thing. <laughs> um, that's pretty straightforward. There's, what is there? Is it four screws or two screws? Two screws at the top. It's got lever points on the bottom, so you have to make sure you're lodged into them before you put it back in. But yeah, just the two screws at the top and it flips out. There we go. And then it's a 7mm, which I... Bit of useless information that I was just taught. All Jubilee clips are seven mils. Right, we are back. Um, my phone ran out of storage again. I need to get a new phone. But this is back together. I think we we're talking about the airbox, which has guidance tabs and two screws in the top. And then this is a ball light to put on because it tucks under here and then screws in there and then crams down there. And then what else was we talking about? Jap strap. The fact that I wouldn't be without it. Um, <laughs> And the polo on the wall. And the polo on the wall over here, yeah. So this was running, what, 240 brake with a shot of NOS and it's a 1.9 diesel. Yeah. 
Yes. And then you was limited by the injectors because of what reason? Uh, just they ran out of headroom, so I went and uh, got some from America, but they didn't work. They were meant to run it up to over 300 horsepower, which is the limit of the actual block. Um, they didn't work, so I got myself an RS4 instead, gave up. Which is that one out there, which was a 21st birthday present, and here's my 21st birthday hoopty. That's an, that's an American term. But yeah, Audi life for the 21st birthdays, eh? But now what are we doing? We're getting to the oil, oil filter. filter. So how, how do we do this? It's just under the engine cover here. If you stick your phone down there, you can see I've got... Yeah, so it sits in like a canister sort of thing. Yeah. So if you're wondering what is meant by engine cover, it's this thing here that makes it look pretty. Um, not that it really makes any difference, but... <laughs> So it sits in a little canister, and if I'm right in saying, it's like a, almost like a cold air intake, isn't it? Like a comb filter, isn't it? It's a paper cartridge, yeah. Yeah, we'll see it any minute now. So there's a cap that pops off. There we go. Look at how dirty that is. And then the new one is in the box over here. I oh, hope it's got O-rings. Right, I'm gonna stand you guys up quick. There we go. That's the old one. Absolutely caked in oil, really thick, really warm as well. Absolutely dripping. And then the new one is perfectly clean. Look at that oil. Still feels quite viscous though. It still feels quite thick, so I suppose it's not too bad. Filter's doing its job. Surely is. And then yeah, so as you can see, I don't know if you saw that on film, but this is an old rubber gasket that goes around the top of the cap. Um, always replace these. Thankfully this kit did come with a new one, which he's just putting on now. And then smear a bit of old oil around it, just helps it seat properly when you're doing it up, not pinching. I can hear oil leaking. Yeah, it'll be coming out the. Um, oh yeah, it's still leaking now. Yeah. Sump. And then, Never put the sump plug on until you've finished everything else. So then it literally just pops back in the cap. This is not so. Not so. There we go. Nice little clip. And then literally play it. That is an easier oil filter change than on the Yaris. That actually is. So the case. you don't fill the thing up, no? It's all right. It'll um, prime itself. Right. Because I know that on a lot of them you have to fill them up, and I don't want to get rage in the Facebook comments. Oh, uh, Facebook comments? YouTube comments. Oh, we'll always get one of them. Oh, you're supposed to fill it up first. You're going to blow the engine up. Well, you heard it from a, a a house DIY Audi specialist himself. <laughs> okay. Put it this way, I haven't primed them since I've been doing it. I haven't had one blow up on me. There we go. There's my torque wrench as well. The best 25 torque newton wrench. meters that should be. And that's what, one man arm strength? Yeah, something like that. Cool. So, that is oil filter, air filter, side light done. And honestly, that is just... Look at that. Is your oil supposed to be this runny? It's because it's 5.30. You'll see when you put the fresh stuff in. Yeah. How watery it is. Is mine 5.30 or 5.40 that I bought? I can't remember. Let's have a look. It comes in a nice fancy box. Again, OEM stuff. It is 5.30. Oh, OEM stuff, mate. OEM stuff. <laughs> if you buy a big box of it, it comes with a big box. Ooh. How much was that holding then? Uh, 20 litres. Bloody hell. But uh, it comes with a nice tap as well to fill up with. That box there. Oh, that's decent. Yeah. I had a bit of a flood and the box got water damaged. Oh, was that through the heavy rains and all that? Yeah. yeah. Did you see the pictures on Facebook of it? I think so. I think I did. Bloody hell, my tripod's filthy because of oil. I play around like a little kid. That's still leaking out. So, there must have been about five litres in there then. <laughs> Could well be. Fingers crossed. Right, we're going to wait for that to stop leaking and uh, fill her up. Right, here we go. It's oil time. Now, this is really weird because it actually comes in a bag, in a box, and then you have to sort of like create the...
cat. But, oh god. Crikey. I missed half of that. Right, I'm going by your gardens because I don't know what 3 litres it feels like. This car takes about 5 litres, by the way. So we're going to fill it up to about 3 or 4 litres and then stop. This is a little car mechanic hack. You use a dipstick and pour the oil down it. Works better with decent metal ones that don't flex. Yeah. Right. See if we've got even anything on the dipstick yet. We've more of it pulled over the actual like filler thing than actually in the engine. Let's see how well we've done it. Is it registering? Just about starting. Bloody hell. More oil's needed. Does. Am I spot on or? Yeah, I think we are. We're spot on! Damn! If anyone needs an oil change, come to me. I am the. I'm not an oil change master. <laughs> <laughs> you thought about that before you said it? Yeah, surely did. Alright, what are we saying? Dump this on, start her up? Yeah. Right, before my phone ran out of space again, oil's all filled up, which was caught on film, and then it cut off. I've cleared up my swimming pool. Well, I, I haven't cleared it up. Graham cleared it up. Cleared up my swimming pool. Uh, it is registering at the top of the dipstick, isn't it? Yeah, we'll see what happens once you crank it. We'll see what happens. See if it dies. If it dies, then, well, it's an LED, so be expected, I guess. Oh. <laughs> right. We got any warning lights? We have no warning lights and it's saying okay. Hey! The bulb light's out, which is good. What are we doing? Leaving it running for a moment and then checking it off. Yeah? Right. What we're going to do is we're going to switch it off, check it again, top it up if needed, and then that should be it done. Actually, we need to decode the uh, service light. So, yeah. See if it needs to be topped up anymore, decode the service light, and jobs are good then. Righty I. So, we are now entering the world of, what is it, VCDS, isn't it? That's it, yeah. Which, I don't know if you can see the screen, let me try and zoom in. I'll move out of your way if you like. So, with this, it tells you every computer on the car, doesn't it? Mm hmm And then, what else does it tell you? Lots of things. It, it tells you, like, you the DPF regen. Boost pressures, all sorts. Ball, yeah, literally everything. And uh, with this, we can reset the service light that pops on when we flick the ignition on. Because it still does it. So... Uh, yeah, it should be going through, should be resetting it all. Oh, I've managed to free up another two minutes worth of recording space as well. So this is now reading every computer. As you can see, the ignition is in the on position, but the car isn't actually on. So that's what you'd need. Now it's going re through and reading every single computer, because it, ain't there two different electronic systems depending on the year as well, isn't there? Yeah, I remember is. Jason saying before. Yeah, there is loads of different. Jason's more into the electrics than me. Because you've got, like, what is it? You've got a canvas system and then you've got individual modules and stuff Absolutely, like that, haven't yeah. you? And so, if you've got an automatic, you've got an ECU as well for the um, gearbox. Right, so what's that done? That has put all the new values in, service reset indication complete. Right, okay. So we should now be able to close this all down. And the big question. Flick the ignition off. Flick it back on. Hey, no more service light. Brilliant. Yep, no more service light. Happy days. Splendid. And that was one of the last tasks to do. So just put the under tray back on. Job to good. And then make sure the oil's still topped up. Yep. Brilliant. Not too shabby. I'll take it. Let's crack to it. 
Right, so she's back on all fours. We're just giving the oil one final check over. Is it all good? I'll tell you in a sec. Oh, seven minutes, 28 of recording time. Got to keep track of that. Plenty. Where are we? Mm. Just on minimum. Just on minimum? Yeah. We're going to need to put more oil in. Need a bit more. Ah, crikey. Right, here we go. Here goes uh, Zach Fails out pouring oil. Right, so I'm not going to leave this bit too, too long. Uh, mainly because of obviously the uh, battery life but that's everything done with the Audi fucking hell it wants to pull now yeah that's everything done with the Audi um, so it's had oil oil filter, air filter done all at 138,796 miles so that's all been done. We're one step closer to being able to sell this car now. Um, all I've got left to do is just generally tidy it up. I've got some correction paint at home to go over a couple of scratches and then obviously I need a decent clean. And uh, yeah, that's everything. But the main of the work has now been done. Unless, fucking hell, she wants to pull. That's a whole lot better. It drives so much more smoother now. Um, but yeah, she needs a bit of a clean up, which is obvious. Um, she needs a bit of correction paint, but the main of the job has now been done. That is obviously the side light and the, um, the service. So yeah, I'm gonna end it here. Um, I do apologise this video, I might have been cut short in a couple of places, I've been having really bad issues with my um, with my phone, it's for some reason taking up a lot of space for no reason, I've gone through and deleted loads of apps literally just to make this video, I've deleted all old texts, I've deleted my emails, I've deleted games, I've deleted other applications I use, um, yeah, I've gone through and I've cleared my phone completely out just to make this video and I still only have 7 minutes of recording time left. So God knows what's going on with my phone. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe.